The top stories, anti-corruption institutions need to be well equipped to fight corruption. And electrified railway linking Ethiopia and Djibouti is said to be pivotal in enhancing connectivity and trade across East Africa. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to EBC World with me, Shvaralaka, and thank you for watching us. Now, four dying for Ethiopia lodges initiated by Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed are transferred to the Amhara, Oromia, Southwest Ethiopia regions. The lodges to be opened by Ethiopian Airlines under the Skylight Hotel brand are expected to boost tourism and economic reform. The initiative, according to Bilal Seyum, the Prime Minister's Office Press Secretariat, has generated public support, created jobs during construction, and initiated extensive infrastructure development. Three of the four lodges have been inaugurated with the Gorgora project completing and inauguration in the pipeline. Entrusting the operation and management to Ethiopian Airlines promises enhanced service and an avenue for international tourism promotion, it was learned. Moving on, Iraq's president announces a plan to reopen its embassy in Addis Ababa, a move aimed at strengthening its relations with Ethiopia. During a meeting with Ethiopian Ambassador Said Mohammed Jibril, President Rashid affirmed his commitment to enhancing bilateral relations between the two countries. He praised the Ethiopian government's commitment to strengthening relations in various areas, including politics, economy, energy, culture, tourism, and people-to-people -people connections. Rashid expressed gratitude to the Iraqi government for accepting their request and offered necessary assistance. Rashid affirmed Iraq's ongoing efforts to improve bilateral and multilateral re relations with Ethiopia and expressed gratitude to the Ethiopian government for its positive response. Ethiopia's Minister of Transport, Ala Musimi, has held bilateral discussions with aviation sector leaders to improve the country's competitiveness and foster collaboration. Alamu is participating in the third edition of the Global Implementation Support Symposium organized by the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, in Dominican Republic. The symposium aims to ensure continued competitiveness in the aviation sector with key areas of focus including manpower, training, digitalization, modernizing air navigation control systems, expanding aircraft component production, and strengthening air service connections across Africa. The event, which takes place from April 3rd to May 2nd, 2024, raises government awareness of the importance of air connectivity and showcases ICAO initiatives, programs, policies, and services for safe, sustainable, and resilient expansion of the aviation sectors. I have wanted so much to eat this Passover meal with you before I suffer. For I tell you, 
I will never eat it until it is given its full meaning in the kingdom of God. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who bringeth forth bread from the earth, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold. The hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man must die as God has determined, but woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. Moving on, Ethiopia is leading in regional economic integration and stability. This is a remark by Ethiopia's Finance Minister Ahmed Shidi at the World Economic Forum held in Saudi Arabia. He highlighted Ethiopia's role as a backbone of cooperation between Africa and Arabia, highlighting the need to leverage both capacities to address regional challenges. The minister emphasized that regional integration and stability are the core of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's foreign policy, and he, he highlighted the importance of South-South cooperation to complement existing cooperation. The finance minister also added that Ethiopia is focusing on increasing cooperation with the BRICS group to attract FDI and enhance technological cooperation. The group advocates for enhanced cooperation between developing countries, promoting South-South cooperation, which is crucial for addressing global challenges and enhancing trade, infrastructure development, technology transfer, and capacity building. The 15th Annual General Assembly of Eastern Africa Association of Anti-Corruption Authorities, ECCAAC, kicked off. The meeting is being held under the theme Coordination, Collaboration and Corporation in Asset Recovery and the Fight Against Corruption. Talking to EBC Ethiopian Federal Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission Commissioner, and also ACCA Vice President Dr. Samuel Urkato said that since anti-corruption inst institutions in the Eastern Africa region have not been well equipped and fully strengthened, the corruption remains a bottleneck in the region. The Kasernisa reports. The 15th Annual General Assembly of Eastern African Association Anti-Corruption Authorities, ICA, kicked off. The meeting is being held under the theme Coordination, Collaboration and Cooperation in Asset Recovery and the Fight Against Corruption, working collaboratively with member countries in the fight against corruption, putting in place mechanisms in the return of assets to the rightful owner, advocating an implementation of anti-corruption UN and AU laws and protocols, and also discussions on the challenges and opportunities in the fight against corruptions were the main issues raised during the annual General Assembly of ICA, approached by EBC Ethiopian Federal Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission Commissioner, and also ICA Vice President Dr. Samuel Arcato stressed that since anti-corruption institutions in the Eastern African region have not been well equipped and fully strengthened, he says corruption remains a bottleneck in the region. In fact, corruption is a threat for every country, and especially in the Eastern African region, since the anti-corruption institutions have not been well equipped and fully strengthened. It has been such a bottleneck which demands a serious investment and determination from political leaders in its eradication. 
አልጎለበትም ገና ሂደት ላይ ያሉ ተቋማት ነው ያዙ ናቸው with regard to combating corruption ecas president and chief ambidisman of rwanda nirerai madelini for her part indicated that policy makers public and private sectors need to work collectively in the fight against corruption corruption is a threat serious threat and we have to work in synergy to tackle corruption also uh, to a sharing to ensure that uh, the assets stolen are recovered and uh, this uh, require at uh, national level to put in place uh, strategies but the important thing to note is that uh, the political will and the great leadership are very important to implement zero tolerance against corruption also the synergy between uh, institutions between countries is uh, very uh, fundamental because can cannot alone combat corruption and succeed to tackle this uh, threat each year africa loses on average 60 billion dollars in illicit financial flows and more than 140 billion dollars to corruption and finally, the electrified railway linking Ethiopia to Djibouti is pivotal in enhancing connectivity and trade across East Africa. The Ethiopia-Djibouti rail link, an electrified track, connects the heart of Ethiopia to ports in Djibouti. The track stretches over 750 kilometers. Built with the support from China, the rail gives landlocked Ethiopia access to global shipping routes. Officials say the trade landscape between the two countries has been transformed. Nagad Station is the main freight station of Djibouti City and is also where passengers get on and off. This is where the electrified station of the railway ends. In 2023, over 40,000 20 feet and 40 feet containers were transported between Nagad Station and the Ethiopian capital Addis Ababa. 127 train sets were designated for transporting bulk cargo including fertilizer, oil, wheat and rice. The station generated over $400,000 in revenue. Travel time between Addis Ababa and Djibouti city has been reduced from two days by road to around 15 hours by train. Passengers arriving under guard station share their experiences. And finally, a quick recap of the top stories. Anti-corruption institutions need to be well equipped to fight corruption. And electrified railway linking Ethiopia and Djibouti is said to be pivotal in enhancing connectivity and trade across East Africa. Dear viewers, that's all the news there is for now. Thank you for watching us. Bye-bye.